Hey guys, welcome to episode six of Fly Forward Vlog. Uh, today I want to talk about self-compassion. Wait, don't go. This is important. Uh, I know we all kind of rail against that, but if we're going to take scripture at its word, then we have to look at that. And a lot of times we think about, you know, what, when Jesus was asked, what are the, what's the greatest commandment? He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So we in our Christian communities tend to take that and run with it, meaning we go and we serve others exhaustively, endlessly. And I think we miss the very crux of some of the things that he was talking about. We, we pour into others. And really, if I look at that, I would not be doing, a lot of the time, I would not be doing anybody a favor by loving someone the way I love myself. So I have to really look at that and, and examine, do I really want to impose myself upon somebody with the way that I would love myself or do I need to think about how I love myself first so I want to think about I want to talk today about self-compassion and what that means and so my book called waking up great chapter 5 is titled self-care so I talk a lot about self-compassion and how that is such a uh, beautiful godly thing to do is to show yourself compassion and to actually love yourself the way that you're loving other people so on page 67 of that chapter of chapter 5 um, I actually have you ask some questions to yourself about yourself and how you are out in the world um, a lot of times you might ask these questions to good friends of yours because you care about them and you want them to see the beauty and the goodness that they put out into the world. So maybe reflect that back toward yourself. Some of the questions I have you look at are, in what ways do I love well? We're always really concerned about how we let others down, how we fail others. Um, we're kind of fixated on that. So what would be the antithesis of that? How do you love well? There are places in the world that you love well. Can you, can you identify those and name them? What are your strengths? What do you do really well? And say it out loud. It's not a, a selfish thing. It's not a self-centered thing. Uh, it's self-compassion to look into the ways that you are using your gifts, exercising your gifts, and bringing goodness and beauty into the world. What are my gifts? How have I made a godly, beautiful impact on those I love? How has the beauty of Jesus flowed from me to other people? And whether or not you believe in Jesus or whatever you think of as the divine, the divine has chosen humans as a dwelling place. How do you see that? How do you see that playing out in your life? Name some of them. Um, how are you worthy of love? You are, if you're human, you're worthy of love. Who loves you? Who are the people around you that love you? Name some people that have, have invested into your life, loved you well. Those people that you know, they love me. They would be there. They're the people that I would call. Name some of the people that love you. And who has given of themselves? Again, who has invested in you for your good? Can you see what they see in you? Can you value the things that you are, the person that you are? So I think those are really important questions to ask and to spend some time on. Um, you know, I recently completed a spiritual direction program. And so I am a certified spiritual director with an emphasis on Ignatian spirituality. And one thing that he does that has been so valuable in my own life is um, I like to practice the, the spirit. It's a spiritual discipline for me to practice gratitude. So at night before I go to bed, 10, 15 minutes, it's not a long exercise. I like to take inventory of my day, kind of gather it up 
put it to bed. And the two questions I ask are, uh, what am I grateful for? What was the best day? Where is a place where I was deeply connected to love? Where, where are the places in my life today that I could give and receive love? And I practice gratitude. The event, the people, the, uh, the things that happened during the day where I felt love and I was able to give love, I look at that and I relive it kind of savor it. Ignatius talks about savoring, savoring those moments and asking for more of those. And then I ask, what am I not so grateful for? Maybe those are places that I missed God altogether. Maybe he was there. And as I take inventory and I look through the day, maybe I can look there in those spaces where I felt angry or dissatisfied or it, it, it was a hard moment, a sad moment, uh, an angry moment. Maybe I could look at that and go, where was God in that? Maybe he was there and I just missed him. And then I just kind of put my day to bed and uh, try to fall asleep with gratitude. I think when we sleep, we can heal through our sleeping pattern. Our dreams are really important. Uh, our process of sleeping is, can be healing. And so if we're putting our day to bed and we're thinking things during the day um, and closing it with gratitude, perhaps our sleep and our dreams will be something that can heal us. And another piece of self-compassion for me is taking some time to play, like I talked about last time. So I've got my griddle here. It's on. Remember this? This is my little, this is my wax. This is a board here. <clears throat> I cut up these these little boards. They're very they're eight, uh, an eighth of an inch thick, and I cut them into little pieces. I get them at Home Depot. They're like they're called yucca board or hard board, and uh, then I gesso them, and then I start building up the surfaces. I found this really cool. This is from one of those uh, old house magazines, something like that. And I'm really interested in doorways, thresholds, windows, uh, anything that is an entrance way. Maybe it's an end, maybe it's a beginning, uh, maybe it's liminal space, maybe it's passing from one, one chapter to another. I'm really interested in that right now. So I'm, I think I'm going to start with this and I'm going to just glue this down and then I have no idea what I'm going to do after that. But I've got this, uh, this is a matte medium, golden. This is really good stuff. And it's what I normally, I'll either use that or I'll use Mod Podge. The thing about Mod Podge is that Mod Podge dries clear. So you can kind of, you can glue over top of papers with encaustic and it's not gonna, sh the paint's not ever gonna show up, which is so great. So I'm just gonna start by I'm just showing you this process. Okay, so I talked a little bit last time about encaustic, which is one of my happy mediums, if you want to call it that. Um, I'm an oil painter, but I take oil painting pretty seriously. And so if I'm finding myself caught up in the product and I need to play, like we talked about last time, even during the grieving process, finding a space to play is really really important and so I can I can leave something a creative process that I'm on that feels really important maybe I'm stuck maybe it's going well but maybe I just need some space to just play and let go and just uh, have a process with God where I'm just talking to him and it might even be light it might not even be about anything particularly pressing but if I need to feel him near and I want his, I want to feel his presence, perhaps I'll go to this because this I can just kind of let go and play. So I am, this is my bone folder. I always have a bone folder nearby if I'm doing encaustic because they are fabulous. They're called bone folders. They're actually, not all of them are made from bone. This one is not. It's a fake bone folder. It's not really bone. It's like plastic or something. 
But anyway, it's used to manipulate paper. It's used to press paper, fold paper, tear paper, bend paper. And I love this. Paper has memory. So anything you do to paper, you know how you wad it up and there's wrinkles everywhere. You're never going to get those wrinkles out because paper has memory. I just thought that was a really cool thing. Anyway, so here I'm just pressing this down, gluing it, and then I'm going to let it dry. And once it's dry, I'll turn it upside down, put it on the cutting board, and I'll slice it off clean so that there's no paper hanging over it. And then I'm going to treat it with encaustic, which will be the next episode. So stay tuned. You will see me put wax on paper, and then you'll fall in love with it and want to do encaustic in your laundry room. All right, thank you so much. I'll see you next time.